plan is okay before discussing the plan like uh, how many of you able to watch the week 5 videos like the lectures week 5 lectures okay okay and week 6 anyone has seen okay so the thing is like uh, week 5 i suppose the uh, the activity questions are already discussed so we'll start with the uh, practice questions today uh, basically compared to other weeks five is a bit difficult the week five is definitely a bit difficult to understand so we want to do it a little slow uh, today we'll do the practice uh, questions but uh, again tomorrow we'll take a part of it that's basically the discussion and the programming part of it right so we don't want to do the entire thing in a single day so today's plan will be like first we'll discuss the programming uh, sorry the practice questions of week five and if you have any questions on week five that also will be discussed then what we'll do we'll go for a bit of discussion about the week six we'll discuss a few portion of aq of week six because you need to also do week six week six is much easier compared to week five and tomorrow like in the session initially we'll start with the week six rest of the aq which will be left from today's so that will be discussed tomorrow and the rest of the session tomorrow will be on week five programming and other issues like um, the portions you're having problem you want to discuss like that right so today let us first start with the programming questions of week five then if you have any questions about week five you can ask right so let uh, us I go i think yeah. yeah you meant practice questions of week five right I yeah practice questions sorry i'm getting yeah, yeah, yeah. No, practice week, and week practice, right? yeah week five key practice questions yeah so let me share my screen. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Okay. So the first question I want you to solve because it's it's basically from week four only, but it shows something that what is the need of doing the content of week five, right? So you supposed to tell me what will be the thing. Is it visible to you? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So let me help you out to read this particular program. So if you look at this, you are having an abstract class called as an output device. You're having something called as an output device, right? Now you are having two classes, a printer class and a monitor class, which are inheriting the same class that is the output device. So we can say a printer is output device and monitor is a output device. The output device having a abstract method that's output, right? So output is abstract because until and unless you know which device it is you do not know how the output will be generated right so that's why the abstract method will be implemented in the concrete classes that is printer and monitor so printer you are having a definition for output inside monitor also you are having a definition of output now also for iteration you are having a interface called iterable which is having two function has next and get next what this get next return it returns a object type it returns a object type up to this is it clear to all yes, yes sir. sir yeah so next what i want to do i want to create a list of output devices so inside which you can store what are the output devices suppose in my computer right so, so that I can iterate among the devices, I can implement the 
iterable. So if I do this, I need to definitely implement these two functions. Right. So inside this, I said that I'll have maximum two devices. So I took an array of two. I can have two output devices, right? So one is a printer, another is a monitor, right? So I took an index and provided has next, which returns a Boolean. If there is an element next, it say yes a true. If it is not there, it returns a false. And get next will return the object of a printer or a object of a monitor, but it returns a object type. It returns a object type. Now the question is, what will be the what will be the statement over here? I need to like write write only one statement over here. So I have created a list. What this list is having? It's having an array of objects storing only two objects. One is a printer object, another is a monitor object, right? So what it prints? It prints printer prints and monitor displays. That means you can understand printer prints coming from the printer class and monitor displays is coming from the monitor class, right? So it is basically the object of printer. It is basically, so you need to identify which object it is so that you can call it. So now, so simple way to do this, what I'll do, I'll take my list. Then I say get next. So what get next will return? What get next will return? An object. It will return an object. So the return type will be an object. So that's not enough. If I want to call the print, because I need to call the print method, right? Then only this monitor displays or printer prints will come. But object doesn't have this capability to print, right? Object doesn't have the capability to print. Who are having the capability to print? It is the monitor who is having this capability. It is the printer who is having the capability to print. That's not print, basically it's output just. Um, it's basically output, right? This output capability is there, not inside the object class. Rather, it is in the printer class or monitor class. So now, whenever it's a first object, I need to cast it to a printer. Whenever it's a second object, I need to cast it to a monitor. Right? Getting my point? Whenever I want it for a printer, I need to cast it to a printer. Whenever I need some monitor, I have to cast it to the monitor. But how do I write a general statement over here? So to the parent class. Yeah, printer and monitor both get this capability of output from where? It get it from the output device. So if I just cast it, if I just cast it to a this output device and then call this dot output, then what will happen? First, it will return an object of a printer. It will be casted to a output device, but casted means the reference will be casted. So static type will become output device, but what will be the dynamic type of the object? Try to understand. It's basically getting like this output device O equal to new printer, right? So what is the static type of O? Output device. And what is the dynamic type of O? Printer. Printer. So what is the capability of O? It can call the output function, right? But which version for, for the output function will be invoked? It depends on the dynamic type. So since the dynamic type of it is printer, so the output function will be called from the printer, right? Whenever it's a two, what will happen? The second one, so the output device 
O, it will be new of monitor, right? So what is dynamic, sorry, static type of O? Output device, so it's having a capability to call the output. But what is the dynamic type? It's a monitor. So from where the output will be called? It is from the monitor. So if I want to do the entire thing in a single line, what should be my statement? I'll do a casting output device, whatever the object I'm getting. So I'm object getting as an object type through a get next and on which I'm calling the output function. Is it clear to all? Hello. Is it Sir, clear what is all? list in this? It is object of output list, right? Okay, yes, yes. Yeah, object of this. So list is having two elements, a new monitor, a new printer and new monitor. So we are basically iterating inside this particular array. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But what is the problematic part? What is the problematic part? Can you identify? I'm sorry, some sound is coming. Hello. Yeah. So can you tell me what is the problematic part of it? So that will give you the motivation why we should go for the generic type. First, tell me up to this, is it clear? Because it is from the week four only. Everyone make sure it up to this, it is clear. Otherwise it's very difficult to understand week six. Is it okay or you're having some problem? No, sir, it's okay. Everyone, right? Well, join a little late if you can quickly glance through. Okay, the, I'm just telling once again, who, who missed out also, like you can check out like loss in between. So you're having an abstract class called as an output device. There are two concrete classes, a printer and a monitor, which is inheriting it. Now, output device having an abstract method called as output. So the capability of output device should be a output function, right? So printer having an implementation of the output, monitor also having an implementation of output. There is a interface iterable. So what I'm doing, I'm creating a new class called the output list. So I can keep a number of output devices into it, right? The idea is, so which implements iterable. So I want to keep only two devices. I take maximum limit is two of my array. I took an object array. Inside that, I have a printer type object and a monitor type object. So there are two devices inside my output device list. And I'm having a I'm providing an iterator implementation over here, the implementation of has next and get next. So which will traverse into this particular array actually. So what we do, we create an object of output device first, which is a list. Then we say the list has next. So which will give me the first index object. It gives me a new printer. Then whenever I go for the next, it gives me the new monitor. But the problem is here, the type of our, my array is object and get next also returns object. Now, whenever get next gives you a new printer and a, a printer object or a monitor object, they'll be returned as an object, right? Now, my question was, does the object class having a capability of this output function? Because whenever yes, this get next is returning, it is returning just as an object, right? But this output is defined inside your output device, not defined. It's declared inside output device and defined inside printer and monitor, right? So object doesn't have this capability. So that's why 
what you are getting here that has to be type casted to output device so that output device having this output function right so this output function becomes accessible now i can call the output i cannot directly call list dot get next output anyone still having a confusion why i cannot call this yes i have the dot about what get next return what type it's written object type object type so you are calling dot output so output function has to be defined in object then yes the, i mean the method has to has be, to be defined right yes. yeah it must be there inside that but object doesn't have any method calls as output because output method i've created for my these these are the classes which are having this output function right so it won't be accessible right so if i want to access the output i need to transfer it to the output device first cast it to the output device first so that my static type becomes my output device right so that i can get a capability so that i can have a capability to access the output function is it okay yeah, but uh, is there uh, any list class over here list is the object right output list type this is your output list class okay now see i cast it to the output object type so that it will have a capability to call the output right yes sir but from the out, from where the output will call that depends of what kind of object it is returning so first time the list dot get next will return the array of zero that's basically the printer object so the static type of this return will be output device that say about the capability but the dynamic type will be a printer so do i can i out call the output function yes i can call the output function because output device having this declaration but which version of the output i'll call that depends on the dynamic type of it that depends on the dynamic type of it so what is the dynamic type of it it is the printer it is the printer so first time whenever i call the output it will be called from the it will be called from the printer it will be called from the printer next time whenever i call it's return a object of monitor right so the dynamic type of the returned value will be a monitor type so it will be called from the monitor so that's why i'm getting the output as a first time printer prints monitor displays but make sure you are understanding yes, this sir. otherwise sir here yeah. the array has two things uh, two different distances uh, are then coming that's why it's printing like that yeah and if the order in yes. the array is reversed so then first the time it is returning this yeah hello am i audible yes sir especially okay. totally dynamic distance okay 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 so everybody clear right up to this please tell me again i am asking otherwise like uh, the entire effort will be in vain i can again repeat it if you ask me yes sir it's understood it is you want me to repeat or i'll continue yes sir it is i'm not getting i don't know it's problem with me or... sir basically here list Uh, we are trying to uh, do the get next uh, method from the list uh, of uh, reference yeah. and uh, that is returning an object so that uh -huh. object cannot give us any method so we are type cast ca yeah. type casting it into output yeah. device yeah from so there, that i can get from access there, to output now i can function. get access the output function now our output function will give the output based on the types in the array defined yeah the right. object that, defined inside our array so first yes. object is of type printer so i get the output from the printer 
Next yes, is the monitor. I get the output from the monitor. Yes, sir. Clear. But can you tell me what will be the difficulty in this program? Where the program can go wrong? Go wrong. Suppose I keep the same program as it is, right? Now what I do? I remove this abstract class. I remove this. Right, so I'm not extending. Say the printer and monitor are two independent class. Both are having output function. Both are having output function. Now here, what I should write? No, now you don't have a, a, a class called output list, correct? Yeah. Sir, in this case, then the only way to check is check if instance of a printer and then yeah. convert it to printer yeah. and if yeah. instance of a motor convert to printer. I need to check it is if it is an instance of printer, then I'll cast it to a printer. So it has to be specifically casted to a printer type. If it is a printer, then whatever. Then again, I'll have else if it is instance of it is instance of monitor. If it is a monitor, then again, I need to cast it to a monitor type, right? Now what we'll lose, we'll lose the generic nature of the code, right? Here, like the same single line walking for all the versions. Like I can may have more output devices over here. I can have a projector or something else. So. A single line will work for every object, which are basically inheriting my output devices. But if I remove the top output devices, what will happen for each Four object? I need to check. Yeah, I need to check for each object what type it is accordingly. I need to cast it and print it, which is unsafe. And the code also gets cluttered, right? We need to identify if I, if I don't check and Why call unsafe, it there. Sir? Yeah. Why? Why unsafe? Yeah, say if I don't check it, if I don't check, if it is a printer type, then I'm calling it. Means I need to do all explicitly checking for the type, then I can call yes, it. Yes, I mean, That's it will problem. increase the manual work. Yeah, right. that is what, like if you don't, uh, if you ignore those, all those checking, you will get a typecasting error. That's the problem is. Like getting chances of error is more, right? That's the thing I am meant to say. Yeah, I mean, committing mistakes. Yeah, increases. so explicit casting, you need to record to do explicit casting in each case. And that has to be, you need to identify the specific type of it, then you have to cast it. So that's why it's calling as a not type separate to do it. Basically, instead of focusing on a particular block of code, one has to I mean, glance through the yeah, entire your code, code is not generic. That's the thing. Yes, yeah. yes. So I hope everybody understood, right? Again, I'm repeating. Okay, yes, sir. Very much okay, okay. Now come to this. For the timing, you think about this line is not there. Forget about this line. Hmm. What will be the output? Now what I told, T is a parameter, it's a type parameter. In parameter, we know you pass a value, right? A variable, but here the parameter is a type. Parameter is a type. So here what I mean to say the T is nothing but a number. So here instead of T will mean this is a number object for, the, for this particular call. So wherever we have a T, we can think about there is a number, right? Whenever we pass the type double as a parameter, now T will become double. So everywhere you are having a T, you can assume there is a double. You read this get class, no? Where you read it? You read it in this week only, right? Week five, the last lecture. So gate class basically returns the type of the object along with associated packages, right? 
So it returns a class type. But if you want to extract the class name out of it along with the package, you say get name. So get class basically returns the class type of the given object. If you give a get name, it prints the name basically. So let us print uh, run this program. Okay. I think I can directly copy paste from here and run this. Yeah, we can, Aru. We just have to change the public example. Public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, let us look for this. Uh, is it visible to you? Yes. Okay. Yes. So T is my parameter type, which can take any parameter, but it has to be a reference type. It has to be a reference type. It cannot take a primitive type, like an inflow double. So it take a capital I integer, right? So you have to pass a class type. This is a constructor which will initialize your object to whatever you're passing, right? So the reference will be copied over here. Then there is a show functions which returns a string. So what show function is doing? It basically finding out what is the type of the object? What is the type of the object, right? Okay. So for the timing, we are commenting this line. Can you see the output? Yes. Can you tell me why you are getting this output? Because of the get class get name. Yeah. See the T is now in for N, for N, for N, it is a number type. It is a number type, but 100 is an integer. Number is a parent class for any number type like a integer, float, double. These are all number type. So whenever t is a number, now t is a number. So the object will be also of a number type. But as the value is specifically integers, the specific type will be integer type, right? Now if I say obj dot get class, it basically returns the type of this particular value, which is the integer value, right? type of this particular value, which is a integer value. Now, why it's giving Java dot lang dot integer? Anyone? It is a wrapper class. The integer class is a defined class, which is defined inside a package called as a Java dot lang. So whenever I'll say about the type, the integer is the class name, but where the integer is defined, it is defined inside a package called as a java.lang, right? So in week seven, we will learn this in details, how to define a package. So that's the idea, like how the class type will be printed. Now, instead of N, if I make it E, what will happen? Print double sum. Double. It is printing java.lang.double and it is 10.5 because now what I'm passing here, it's a double type. So T is now double, right? Okay. Okay, let me have it like this. I'm again changing it to N. Now. Now it, is float float it will be float because float, float is also a number mm -hmm. type. Say it's a child type, so I can assign it to number. So number, if it is, if T is a number type, it could be assigned with any child type, right? So it's a child type. So it's now is a float. Okay. Now. 
given error because character is a number type not number type it's number type right so it could be assigned with any value which is of type number so number type who are the child classes of number type it could be in float double right and long so i'm assigning with the character type so that's why it will give an error so it's displaying the error right so what's the parent type for character character doesn't have a parent type like if you say in that way object is a parent type of all so in between your wrapper classes in between your wrapper classes like int float double char boolean um other than char and boolean all are inherited from number other than char and boolean all are inherited from number getting my point yes sir whatever the wrapper class means the primitive type wrappers we have from them number is a parent from for all the wrappers are the, uh, ex except this uh, character and the boolean so that's why it doesn't work for a boolean so up to this is it is okay right anybody any problem anybody any problem i don't think anybody having okay uh, sir uh, in case of character we can type cast and print its ascii value now that is also possible here uh, earlier you show a in single quote if it is a if a I, uh, if I, yeah if I yeah, yeah, yeah it's it. correct it's correct yeah you don't mean to say this right yes sir yeah correct yeah that's possible but uh, the reverse is again not possible i can have a 65 now it will give a problem right yes sir because 65 is a capital a i'm casting it first means it is becoming a character then i'm assigning now it will give an error yeah you are correct okay so what is the issue with this so if i have this it gives me an error but you need to understand why it is error that's more important now it looks like what is the type of e double right yes, yes sir. sir and left side i am having a number so if a double is castable to a number No, yes. Yes. yes no sir. because double is a number integer is a number so all are castable to number but does it really say this this casting no it's basically the type of e is example of number example of double so it's not a casting between double and number it is casting between example number and example double which is not allowed which is not allowed right so double inherits number doesn't means example number sorry example double inherit example number right that relation is not true getting my point yes sir no sir yes. right so so number sorry the double is castable to number doesn't implies that example double also castable to a example number right um sir i didn't get this can you please repeat this see double is compatible to number right yes sir because we have the property it's that it's a child class yes sir so child class can be casted to a parent type right yes sir but really i do the same here is it casting between double and number what is the type of n so n, n is not equal yeah i missed it can you repeat so i was so, saying that uh, we are trying to equate objects here yeah right, what sir? what is the type of n example, example sir it is example number of number yes sir. and e is example double 
Now what I'm saying double is compatible with number doesn't mean example double is compatible with the number. That's my point is. Now another thing you please keep in mind example number is only compatible with example number. It is not compatible with anything else. Is it okay? So that means if we create E also as example number, in that case, n is equal to E will be valid. If I create uh, this E as an example number instead of double, if I make it number. No, no. What I told uh -huh. example number is compatible only with example number, not anything else. No, no. What I'm saying, if I declare E also as an example number equal to new example number, then it won't show any error. Uh, now, is it okay? Uh, yes, sir. Because it is a double type. Here it is an integer type. So it took a double. The num that integer is got uh, overridden by a example double actually, not example number. Actually, it's got example double. The specific type it got, but. If it is anything other than example number, it will give you a casting error. So that is what I meant to say that. Sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, sir Shubham, yeah, please. Right? Yeah, so my please. question is, uh, yeah, so, so my, my, my question is, so when we are doing uh, like in the example, like when you're doing example number and example number, so now the output we are getting is ex Example double that makes for, mm -hmm. for that to make sense. So can you tell me why it is taking n equal to e as ten point five not yeah. sixty five? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, if you look at over here, uh, I'll open my PDF. It will be easier for me. Yeah, just one minute, give me. Can you see this side by side? Yes, sir, I can see, yeah. Okay. So what E is pointing to? E is pointing to an object. N is also pointing to an object, which is having a value which are of yeah. number type, right? So inside n, what you have? Correct. Inside n, you are having 65. Inside e, you are 65, having yeah. 10.5. Now, correct? 10 now, n equal to e in, in assigned yes. with e, that means n is now pointing where e is pointing? Pointing to 10.5. Okay. So does it make sense now, the output? Okay. I don't think yeah, I don't have to explain anything sense. now. Thank yeah. You. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. No, 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 it's clear. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, okay, thank you. So, is it clear to all this entire thing? Yes, sir. Okay, so let me. So, is casting this. possible? Like, can, can no, direct cast casting it? is not possible. We'll discuss on next day how it is possible. It's a uh, difficult, not difficult, I'll say you need to know. So, there is no direct way to cast it, rather, understand. We'll discuss it tomorrow. In, in terms of some just to confirm sir uh, so if if i put the example if i try to cast example double into example number it won't work right uh, i never tested it but i believe it uh, won't work i have to check it can you change back yeah, that yeah i'm just checking it i'm checking it and in front of the that yeah, i'm doing yeah it's going into n right you mean to say this right yeah I, I, yeah I mean this. Oh, so it still gives an error but exactly what error yeah okay, okay, not cast cast. Yeah. Okay. so that's what like uh, this example number castable to example number only. So there is a different way to show this. So we'll take it afterwards. Let the basic thing be cleared because this is a bit difficult. I want to go a little slow. That's why I told like uh, 
uh, from now onwards we'll do five and six simultaneously and we'll take five little slow because six is easy again not so difficult okay sir. this is simple question in aq we have discussed anybody wants to answer this in aq we do, do to be capital yeah. it takes the wrapper type right the class type or reference type it do not take the primitive types it do not take the primitive types you need to pass you need to pass the wrapper class type. type or wrapper types sir uh, show on this side yeah please sir, can you briefly explain this concept briefly just um see this display is a generic function, right? Which takes a T. Correct. Now, T is the Correct. parameter type. So, as per the rule of our generic Correct. type instantiation, it says the T can be any class type or a reference type. Right? Class okay. type or a reference type. It cannot be a primitive yeah. type. It cannot be a primitive type. Correct. So whenever we are calling Correct. this, look at this call, right? So in the first call, if the array one is defined like this, so this is integer. So I'm passing basically integer for t. So which are compatible. In that the next, right. we are okay. passing a string, capital S string, which is compatible. But here and here we are passing mm. some primitive types, mm. which are not class. So that's why it will not recognize this too. Okay. So t. The parameter type only right. can recognize the class type, the reference types rather. Right? It's clear, got right? It, got, it, got it. Thank you. Okay. Thank yeah, you. it's clear. Okay. So this is a bit big program, but yeah, Afnan, you want to say something? Yeah. Good. Good afternoon, sir. Good so, afternoon. One question. Yeah. So in the wrapper types, so. Yeah. Uh, Will it be pass by value as is the case with primitive types or if we no, use... no, no, it's a pass by address. Okay. It will be, it will become pass by address if we use wrapper classes, right? Um, pass by address. No, you want to say a single value or an array? Not array, single value only. I believe it will be pass by value only because it will take a auto casting. I believe okay. so. Okay. I okay. don't think it will be a. Reference. Pass by reference, right? Yeah, okay. I'll make sure you tomorrow, but uh, I believe it will be a auto casting because see, I'll, I'll show you one thing, but I'm not uh, very sure. I have to check it once. So whenever I say integer, I, and I have a int i equal to 10. If you do this, no. Yes, sir. So internally, it calls the copy constructor of, uh, sorry, integer. internally, it calls the, yeah, for the integer class. Okay. Like, now, if we were to pass this to another function and change it there. Yeah, I got your point. Yeah. So will it be changed or not? That is what I was wondering about. Well, let us check, no. Okay, all right. Yeah. I don't believe it's a copy by, I think it's a copy by value. Yeah, I think it uh, should be call by value. That's what I also believe, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. I need to check it. I, I didn't check it. Uh, if I can pass I, here I can have system dot out dot println. Uh, it's a I again here and say I make it 20, right? So if it is a reference type, type, I'll get a 20 here, right? In this case, it shouldn't be changed, sir, right? Because we are not, uh, we are just passing the primitive. So it will not be changed. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. You want to? Yes, okay. exactly. In the general case, it won't be changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it is not getting changed. Okay. Right? Yeah. Still primitive, right? it means. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's right. it's 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 do a like a, I believe copy constructor type of a thing. It's basically do in a step like it's go from first integer. 
it's it's there in some book explained very nicely it's go to a integer int first then it is going into this then it's basically goes like a integer of int i okay, okay. like it's okay. integer i from there it goes for a int i then again like a integer i equal to it's something like this it goes Got it. Yeah, yeah. All integer right. Integer to int again into a integer by wrapping it. All right. But I'll I'll give the exact step. I think this is correct, but I need to again check it. I forgot. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So just quick look at this. This faculty and uh, HOD class, although they are very simple. So HODs are faculties, right? Faculty members. HOD is a faculty. So we are having accesses to initialize the name and department. We are having constructor. So we call the constructor. So from this but both the cases I do have two string. Why I do this? Super. Yeah. We are using super, no, sir. No, yeah. no. Actually, two string is a function of each class. Okay. It is in third week. Object, object class. It is a member of object class. And what object will happen yeah, if you override two string? What will happen? So for any so object, override method will be called. Yeah, if you pass okay. it inside the print method, it actually call it like e dot two string. It will be implicitly making the two string call. So that's what if you are going to create a class faculty, and you are having a faculty e and for the faculty if the two string method is defined so how it will print it will print in this specific format only the output getting my point getting my point please repeat this see what i'm saying inside the system dot out dot print ln or print function Whenever I pass any object, it implicitly call this two, two, two string function on that object, right? Yes. Now, if I have a faculty E, E is an object, and I pass only E inside the print. Now, print will, E will try to, uh, the print will uh, try to call E dot two string to get the particular string to be printed for it. So, if I have a implementation of two string method inside this, it will pass this specific string to be printed through my print function, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> Just one minute. Let me clear this because you have to use it uh, in practical situation. You need to do many a time this thing. So complex number, I have something, right? So I have a private. int r and i, real and imaginary part, right? Uh, let me have a public constructor, complex num, int r, int i. So which could go into this dot r equal to r, this dot i equal to i. If you have any doubt anywhere, you can ask me, right? And we are having a public. So remember, whenever you are overriding, it is safest way to make it public because you do not know on your super class how it is defined. So by chance, if you reduce the visibility, like if it is public there, you make it default or anything else, it will give you an error. But if you make during the override, if you make your function as a public, you're safe. It never gives an error, right? So string. So I would want to override the two string method. Okay. 
uh, first thing, what will happen if I don't override it? Complex num c equal to new complex 10 and 20. Now we have system dot out dot print ln. I want to print c. What will be the output? Ten twenty. What is this? It prints the class name with a hash code. Address of the object. Yeah, in a hashed form. Because it do not know for complex number how to print the output. It do not know for complex number how to print the output. Right. So what happens internally whenever you're calling for C internally, it's calling the two string. So even if you explicitly write this two string over here, if you run it, you get the exact same output. So you're getting you no know, printing C means actually printing C dot two string. So that's why if I change the implementation of two string inside your class, say rather than I'll return what? Arup sir. Yeah. So what is the default uh, way of two, uh, two string? In the sense, like if we are we are doing, if we are not writing two string and we are directly doing system dot out dot in the object C. class, how so, it is implemented? Uh, yes, yes, yes. In the object, uh, in the my question is, uh, how how this thing to display is implemented in the object so that the resultant uh, resultant thing is the location of the things which we are storing. Yeah, that not that the I don't know print. how it is implemented in the. It basically doesn't print the actual okay. address. It gives you the hash code. It's not the actual address hash in Java. What, hash code of the address and the object, some kind of code it gives. Hash hash function. Uh, okay, you will have, I'll read the hash function in week six. We haven't done it actually. Okay. So let us uh, wait for okay. uh, week six, right? Anand okay, sir, okay, do no we problem. have the hash code in your question today? You are going to explain? No, sir. Okay, okay we'll do it the next day. But remember, it prints a hash code with the class name, right? No problem, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. But how it gets it that I, that's the internal implementation inside the class. No so problem. So what? Sir, no problem. What I want to return? I return a R. It's a plus, then a I, then maybe another I within the bracket. So I want to part the real part. Then I have to want to print the plus. Then I have to print the imaginary part with the I, right? So if I do this, see, this is your output. So whenever it's calling internally the two string, it is actually calling this. Is it fine? Is it fine? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So here, what we have, we are having a faculty which is inherited by a HOD class. Now, interestingly, we are having a copy array function, a copy array object function, right? Now, before reading this, this, uh, this function, this copy function, which basically pre-copy array, to another array, a array to another array, right? Now, before going into discussion on this function, let us find out what, what is expected from this copy function. So here we are having a HOD array, where I'm having a list of HODs, three HODs, right? I'm having a array of faculty, which is size of two, now copy array object, which is the class name. This is a static function. So I need to call it using the class name. I say copy. So source become the HOD array. The destination becomes a member array. Uh, sorry, it becomes a faculty array, right?
now what will happen i find out which is having the minimum size there are three elements inside the hod array there are two elements inside the faculty array so limit is 2 so the first two elements from the hod array will be get copied into faculty array will be copied into faculty array up to this is it clear arup sir shubham this side uh, yeah. everything is clear but i didn't get uh, this part the public in the inside copy area okay we are writing public statics s extent t no that is that i haven't explained yet but other than this okay, thing sir, everything is clear system. other people also yeah. clear right okay now what should be the s i want to make it generic i want to make it generic means s could be a type t could be a different type s could be a type t could be a different type so whenever i pass it like this i pass a hod which is of type hod array so s is nothing but a hod and what is t t is members so it's basically a type of faculty faculty okay now the question is you are copying a object of source into a target type right so what does it means yes your target i is a reference src i also is a reference so src i is pointing to a object which will be now also pointed by target i right because both are reference type right a s and t both are classes yes right now what is the type of src array it's a s now my question is if a s is any arbitrary class and t is any arbitrary class is it possible to cast a s type to a t type whenever i am doing this that means a type a is getting casted to type t right whenever src i is copied into tgt i that means a source type is getting casted to a target type am i correct Yes, but if any A and T are any arbitrary class, can we do this? Suppose I am having a class A, a some class, a class B, it's a some class. Can I have a class A and class B object? Can I do A equal to B? Will it take? No, sir. No, sir. So what is the rule that has to apply so that it will be fulfilled? if i have uh, to this should s should have the capability of t when this 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 statement will be a true what um, kind of relation the source is the subtype of the target forget about source and all uh, my thing is i am having class a and b and i am having this statement in which case this statement will execute it don't give a compiler error so b extends a so when if when b extends a right If B is a child class, then only it is possible, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Because a parent can point to a child type, right? Or child can be casted to a parent. Again, if you look at this image, if and only if this is a this object is a child, it's a type of T or a child type of T, then only I can refer T can refer to this object, right? So, what should be the relation between S and T? What should be the relation between S and T? T should be the parent and S should be the child class. So, what does it means? S extends T. Yeah. If you don't declare this relation explicitly, this statement will give you a compiler error, because any arbitrary target source can be copied into target. You need to say. 
the type of source is a child type of target then only this copy will be allowed on compile time otherwise it's a invalid statement if you don't say is extend t does it make sense yes sir sir just, just to clarify the things which we are writing in these uh, uh, greater than or smaller than brackets so first one s extends t is is, is telling about what's the type of s s s array src and the second t is showing the type of t array tgt am i correct sir first i am defining what are my types type parameters so i say there is a type okay. t there is a type s but s has to be always extend t you can even write it in this way it doesn't okay. make any problem right <clears throat> now i'm telling how am i going to use my s and t s should be an array mm -hmm. sorry s will be the type of a src array source array t should be the type of a target array okay this is the type okay. definition so my, my, mm -hmm. yeah and this okay. this is so within the parameter the this is the use of the type can... yeah okay so within the within this uh, uh, this static uh, uh, greater than or smaller than uh, sign bracket so we can interchange like we can write t uh, yeah yeah you can write no problem that that doesn't make any problem yeah you can yeah. write s src and t t t correct Okay, okay. Yeah, that's possible. That's possible. Thank But you. this relation is important. If you don't make this relation, this line will give an error. If you just say there is a S, there is a T. So S and T are not related, right? So this array cannot be copied into the, this element cannot be copied into this. This is illegal in Java, right? You cannot copy an object of another object which are of unrelated classes. You can do a copy of an object which is of the child type only. So that's why specifying the relation is so important over here. Is so this if clear? If we yeah. also ignore this part, if we also ignore this part like s extend t uh, comma t, so then if, again also it will show the error. If no? you don't say this, the question is what is s? What is t? Yes, yes. Those are not defined, right? Your okay. compiler do not know what is S. Whenever you put it inside the triangular bracket, means you are defining what are your parameter types. So that's why this writing T over here. What? Say okay. I am having something as a T as a generic type. Then I can have a T type A. But if you don't do, you say T type A. The question will be raised: What is T? I don't know. so everyone fine right but i'll suggest everyone again read it this uh, the practice question please try to solve once again after seeing this live session so it will be very clear once you run this program you try to do something with them then only it will get very clear to you okay so we are having interface x a class a a b extends a implements x in aq activity questions we have discussed this what does it means t is a subtype of both a and x yeah extends a implements <gasps> X yeah also. but x is a interface but remember here everything is a extends inside a type parameter right so x can be a class x can be a extra abstract class or x can be an interface right so i mean to say t extends both a and x so i need to pass a t which extends a and x so t will accept which type now in your program what is the type that extends both a and x
it's b sir because i think b. it is b yeah. it is the only type b oh. which is accepted by t which extend b and implements x right so that's why you can pass only b here if you try to pass any integer or any other thing it will raise an error because it will take parameter type parameter only those things which are extending a and extending x or another way you can see implementing x so similar type you are having only one over here that's a b so if you pass anything other than b it gives an error but what will be the output hello Yeah, you are audible. Uh, Rupa, is it display? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it a display. display. It's a display. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Because uh, it's an object of example class, right? So this call goes over here. Now it's calls on display. So it will call. Print this. Shall I move to the next? Yes, sir. Anyone? The similar thing we have already done. I don't want to discuss this from you who wants to uh, discuss this. Please raise your hand. Mm -hmm. Please read it. Raise your hand. Who want to discuss this? Rahul. Rahul want to discuss. Yeah, Rahul. Please. Sir, um, because t extends number, uh, the only uh, the wrapper class of integer and wrapper class of double satisfy the condition of uh, the extends. Uh, both character and string don't satisfy that condition. And so that's why. Yeah, yeah. That just seeing this output itself, like so, not output the option itself, we can find out. So we accept accept a parameter t who extends a number. So it should be a it can be a number or any child type of a number. So what the child type of a number among them? Integer is a child type of number, double. So these are not right. So they cannot be passed as a parameter, right? The definition of t say it must extend a number. So I need to pass a array which is of number type. So it could be a number type, integer type, double type, float type, and long type. Single type also. Sorry, I forget to me uh, tell about the single type and byte type. So what and, is max over there in the public static t extends number t max? Max is a function I'm defining over here, which takes an array of t type and find out from the array okay, which so is max the maximum is the value. Name, okay. Yeah, max is a function name, which is finding out what is the maximum the number of the array. What? Yeah. Okay. But but what is the next line again? It's showing t max is equal to t array zero. Okay. Yeah. So now then in the next. Okay, next I got line, your problem. You are meaning that uh, the function name also max and the variable, variable name is also name max. Is also max. That's, it's creating yeah, confusion. I think uh, yeah, it's a bit confusing. I believe uh, I should have given some. We should have given some other name, but it's legal because the scope of this max is within these two bracket, and uh, this max is a global mm -hmm. inside the class, not global. Its scope is within the class, mm -hmm. so that's why these two max doesn't conflict. This max having the scope within the it is but local. Is, yeah. Yeah, but this is this max like t max is equal to t array zero is the is a variable. Yeah, variable. That's it. Nothing. Yeah. Else. Yeah, yeah. It's just a variable. Okay. So I take this two as a max. Then next time I get a four, I set four as a max. Then next time I get one, I say it's four is a max. I take six, I fix six as a max. Three, I say six is a max. So I'll return six. That's all. But the type of t depends on what kind of value you are passing. So if you are passing it's integer, t will be integer. If you are making double, it will be a double. That's all. 
sir if we had put uh, uh, the t inside the uh, angular brackets with the comma in there we'll have to pass two parameters right sir if i pass t in the triangular bracket and next to t extends a number next to t i'm not getting you mean to say He's this is asking that uh, if e two, comma e t comma t extends number yes yes it will give an error because it will be a double declaration of t right you cannot define t you need to give us some other name for the second type because as a parameter like you can i pass uh, int a comma int a so it's a bit right it same like right getting my point you cannot have t comma t no means it is the same thing again redeclaring it's like you are writing in a you are writing a function inside which you are defining int a again int a so now inside your program whenever you say a equal to 10 you do not know which a you are referring right the same thing will happen so the second name must be something different a or something right is it okay you are getting that i think you are not audible hello yeah yeah please sir i was saying sir ki if uh, is it when do we put uh, uh, parameters in a triangular bracket and when do we keep it outside of it if i am writing inside the triangular bracket means i am defining them if i write outside then means i am using it see i have to write a code i need to do this double sum int a double b right what could be the equivalent of a generic type i need to have a type for double i have to have a type for int sorry not this i need two types now the return is double so it's a t then sum then s a t b so sir the outside the bracket is the return type yeah it's a return type yes now how do you call it you need to say the t is a double and you need to say a is a integer not int this is how do you instantiate means you want mean to pass this double as a first parameter and integer as a second parameter that's all you got this thank one you. no yes sir thank you so this this um, yeah t is yeah. not part of definition it's a return type of max function yeah yeah please so sir uh, so this uh, one two three four fifth this fifth line we are writing t array i dot double value Mm -hmm. can you tell a little bit about this double value double value is a predefined function of number right so see okay you are having a double d what is the value of d1 it's a d dot double value means the oh, value okay. of this class so will be assigned to value. d for int just i'm showing just mm -hmm. see this integer i equal to 10 if you want to get this the primitive type it's as say i1 it's i dot int value but these functions are predefined inside the number class so this double value or int value they are not specifically defined inside the integer or double class they are all defined inside the class called as a number now you may say why i am talking double value i am not taking a integer value i may have take a int value uh, sorry yes. int value or a float value say integer yes yes promoted to a double or a float is promoted to a double doesn't lose any data right but if i make a double value integer value but i pass a double type there will be a data loss right if i pass a double yes, value and i do a i pass a 
double value and I do int value here. So what will happen? There will be a, if it is 3.14, then Decimal it will get degree. only three. Yeah. So safest is get the double value because it gives the highest kind of uh, storage. So that's why. Okay. So for the for the integer also, if we do like uh, if our integer value is two and we are doing i dot double value, it will give two. It will give two. Yeah, it's, it will give two. Am I correct? Yeah, two point oh, zero. Okay. Yeah, it gives two point zero. But it doesn't matter, right? Got if it, I go it. for a upper casting, like a promote the value, it does not matter. That's the idea. Yeah, is information here. is not getting lost. Got yeah, it. yeah, okay. yeah. So comparing a double with yeah, comparing with a int a double value, like if you have uh, this uh, greater than 3.14. So if I have a int value, both becomes three, three, right? So it will be a problematic part. If Correct. I do an int value, right? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody was telling something. Yeah, Sir, yeah. since I have uh, defined the array as, uh, as having the elements uh, of type numbers, then I can also uh send numbers uh in uh, in integer and float together right but the in instant... yeah 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 you can do that okay. you can check yourself yeah okay so We are having an interface verifiable where I'm having a function is equal, which can check equality between two objects, which can check the equality between two objects. Now, employee implements verifiable and manager implements, uh, sorry, manager extends, extends. That means employees verifiable And manager also is it okay for all? Why I'm saying that? So can you repeat this again? Verifiable manager is verifiable. Verifiable is an interface which gives you the capability to check two objects are equal or not. Is equal function, right? Okay. Okay. Now employee implements verifiable. So employee is verifiable. Employee manager what do you mean by this thing? means it will have all the capability of verifiable right correct right correct 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 so correct, i correct. i say manager extend employee so manager also will have the capability of verifiable right got it yes correct yeah so if i say employees verifiable it's meanings like a if you inherit uh, employee into a manager, then manager is also an employee, right? In that sense. Yes, yes. Yeah. Got it. Sir. Got it. Thank you. So rest of the things are like all constructor and all. We are not going into it. You can just uh, read afterwards. But important part of it is this. Uh, excuse me, sir. Hmm. So yeah. You said this first function defined. That is class defined. Public class employee implements very viable. And the second, uh, the manager is employee. Hmm. Okay, so as employee is uh, verifiable, that's why manager is verifiable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So if employee inherits a human, and manager employs a employee, then manager is also human, right? Okay. Yes, uh, is equal function. What it is doing over here? If D is an instance of an employee, it checks the ID of two employees are same. If ID of two employees are same, it says the employees are same. Otherwise, reports the employees are not same. Again, I say an employee could be compared with another employee, right? It cannot be compared with any other object. So that's why for D, I'm checking. So one object is this, one employee is this. Can you understand what do I mean by one employee is this? 
I'll call yes, it, it E dot is yeah. equal, right? E1. So for behalf of E, I'm calling this. So this is nothing but this E and D is nothing but this E1. So this is always of, is already an employee type, but D has to be also an employee because an employee could be compared with only an employee. So that's why I first check if D is a employee type. Then I check the ID of D and ID of this, these are same or not. If they're same, I say they are the same employee. Otherwise I say they're not the same employee. Is it clear? Clear, sir. Now manager also have the same thing. Sir, can you please explain it again? Okay. I wanted to ask. Yeah. Please. Sir, if D is an instance of uh, employee, why are we type casting it again? But it is right now object type, no? Okay, sir. If I it is an object type, how do I get D dot ID? Because object type doesn't have ID. So what I do, I first cast it to an employee type. Now D will become an employee. Then on that I can say now dot ID. So I have discussed in the first question, right? Why I do cast it? Because it's an object. I need to say it's an employee first. Yeah, whenever I'll call this E is equal, it has to be called like this means E will be compared with E1. I want to check E and T1 are both the same employee or not. How do I check their same employee by their ID? Now, if I make this call like this, the E becomes the this, this point, uh, this reference and E1, what I'm passing over here, but E1 will be passed as an object, not as an employee type. But remember, uh, employee could be only compared with an employee. So that's why I checked out first if D is an instance of an employee, then I cast D to an employee so that I can compare between this ID and the D's ID. If ID of both the object matches, I say the employees are same means are true, otherwise false. Yeah, understood, sir. Now the same is employee is inherited by the manager also. That means I can also compare between two managers. Because manager also is an employee, right? Because manager is also is an employee. So if this is the yeah. is equal is also inherited into the manager, I can also compare it between two managers, right? But can I compare between a manager and employee? No. Why no? So they are of uh, the manager may not have. Okay, I don't know. Sorry. Okay, let us try sir, to find uh, out E. Yeah, please go on. Uh, yeah, sir, I, yeah. I have a doubt like in, in, in is equal function which manager is inheriting from the employee. Hmm. If we see the function like it is in that it, it is checking whatever we are providing as the argument like object D, it is checking as an instant of employee. So hmm. now my question is if manager is extending this complete definition then in that also it will check the inst like the whatever the argument we are giving it's an instance of an yeah let us try to do now that in the, in that case this is will yeah, this work or not right of, uh, manager type yeah let let us check yes, out yes no? yes yes so i'll have a manager not writing everything m1 and manager m2 and m1 suppose have a id uh, suppose 10 and M2 ID suppose 20. So these are already there. Okay. So I call M1 dot is equal M2. M2. First thing, can I call it or not? Yeah, calling. I can call it because, because it is inherited. Yeah. A manager. Yeah. It is manager. Manager can be casted to an employee. And M to which is of a manager type can be casted to an object type. So call is possible, right? Call is possible. Now, what is this? This is a manager. This is manager. Manager. Type. This is a manager. <coughs> now, D is M2. Manager. This is a M2. Now, the question is now, is this M2 is an instance of an employee? Will it give a true no. or false?
Okay, let us see. Yeah, it will give true, I guess. Why to be confused? Right? Right? Okay, system dot out dot print ln. Hmm. So let us have emp e equal to new emp. I'll have mgr m equal to new mgr. Hmm. Let us have it. I'm putting it in the bracket. Huh? I say E instance of EMP. So what it should give? What it should give? True. 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 Got it. Because every manager is an employee, right? It's from the fill, uh, that idea of object orientation, right? But what is not true? Is an employee is a manager? Not always. Sir. Not it's always. No, yeah. Not necessarily, right? But this is always true. If you just remember the hierarchy properly, like is a clause, most of the problem of the things get solved. So you need to ask like, what is what? It's very logical in that way. So what you understand, it's work for manager as well, right? The is employee. Uh, what we are doing? Yes. We are creating some generic function over here. So that is what we need to find out what will be the type. So what it will do? It basically takes an array and search for the element if it is there on the array and if it is there, it's a true otherwise false. It's a linear search. So what we have, we are having an employee array. And we are basically want to search a manager like you are passing the employee array and you are searching a manager. We are having an employee array searching a manager. So whenever I ask EMPS of I dot is equal M, does it works? We checked out M1 is equal works with M2. This and this both are manager type. We have checked out is equal E2. That's also works when both are employee type. But here, this is a employee type. This is a manager type. Will it work? Hello. Uh, sir, I guess it, it it will work because yeah, it will work, right? Manager is also an employee, I guess. Yeah, yes, manager yes. is an employee. So whenever this aim going into casting to an employee, it, it don't have any problem, right? It can be casted to an employee. Yes. But but if I say m dot is equal, now then also it will work because you are casting it to employee it only. It yeah. will work for in all cases. Okay, so what will be the template definition? I need to have an employee type. I need to have a, so this is an employee type. This is a manager type, right? So I need to have two this, right? E and S. <laughs> I need two parameter yes. type. 
Are they have to be related? Yes, sir. S needs to extend T. Yeah, definitely. Otherwise, it won't work. The enter function will fail, right? Then rest of the part, it's easy. You can do it. Uh, rest of the part, what is the function name? Find employee, which returns a Boolean, right? It's a find employee. Yes. And it's a T type array. EMPS, it's an array. And is type manager. And array. yeah, since I'm directly calling it, it must be a static, right? I'm, I didn't create any object. I didn't create any object for find employee, right? So this is the thing. Correct. Yeah, 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 yeah I missed this. <coughs> this is required, right? Otherwise, from where you will get is, is, equal, is equal. Yes, sir. Okay. If T doesn't yeah. extend uh, verifiable is equal or you're not getting, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Please, 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 please note this. So not only this, T has to extend also verifiable, right? Otherwise, from where you are expecting the T also will have is equal. Right? So it has to be also a relation. This is again simple. Uh, yeah, yeah. So in yes. the definition of the yeah. in the definition of the employee, we are already extend implementing the interface. So my question is. When we are defining the time in this no no package, no see we see, again have to extend it. See, manager is extending that employee is extending that, but what about T and S? Yes. T, do you know it? What it, it extends? S are general words. Okay, okay. Yeah, general words, but you need okay, to say T is okay. something which is extending verifiable. Otherwise, if I just pay pass a yeah. integer in case of t, and integer doesn't have this uh, is equal function, then for with reference to t, I cannot call is equal. No, I should have a type which is having this is equal function. Got it, got it. Uh, in fact, in place of t uh, extend verifiable and s extend c if we directly like uh, write like uh, employee and manager it will work or yeah it will work it will work the, you can write writing variables t... in variables form no if you 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 mean to say here directly you will write manager and employee yeah yeah manager and employee so th in that case you don't have to make it generic no it will become specific you can just write a boolean then uh, employee array, employee array, whatever the array is, then manager. So there is no okay. need to make it generic. No, in that case, you can make specific for employee and manager. So we give this passing yeah. of the type the of because we, yeah, mm -hmm. we make want to make mm -hmm. it generic. So this is true for any T which is inheriting verifiable. So if I have more classes. And if it is inheriting oh. verifiable for all those classes, the T will work. Is it okay? No, I got it. Got it. Clear, sir. Thank you. Yeah, clear, clear. Yeah. Use is clear. Thank you. Shall I explain this or it's okay? Quickly check it. I think you can check it, no? If you have any problem, next day we can discuss. I'm not discussing because it's very simple the question. Is it okay? I'll skip this. Okay. Okay. Because the, it is basically the syntax and all. But uh, if you still have a problem, tomorrow you can ask. No problem. I'll explain. Okay. This is basically on okay. reflection. So please check out the class program. So in this program, so you are having instance variables. Uh, 
come instance variables ha no uska test acha nahi hai iska mystery ka ha mystery lit hello yeah some sound is coming yeah so these are your instance variables so you are having some private and some public then uh, you have constructors there is a private constructor there is a parameterized constructor and there is a copy constructor right these are your constructors and finally you have finally you have some methods sir how this uh, private constructor makes sense uh, actually you need to give a private constructor whenever you don't want anyone else to call this so you want always the people are calling your object or creating your object they will always pass this data or they will copy it okay. then what you But, need to make you have to make some arrangement so that they cannot call it how do you make that arrangement because if you don't write it your java compiler will by default give yeah. you a free default constructor but i don't want to take that also ah, okay, and i want okay. to give you that also so i'll make it private so this is not available for outsider got it got it right if i don't write got it, it okay. then compiler will create it by default but if i write it as a private compiler won't give it now yeah so you can find out the statistics about this particular class like what are the uh, instance variable like how many instance variables are there what are the return uh, what are the types of them what are the constructors which are the public constructor which are the declared constructor which are the public methods which are the declared method like this and for the methods you can extract what are the return types what are the parameters for constructor you can find out what are the parameters right so these all could be done by reflect package right so the question is what should be the statement at line 1 and line 2 respectively such that succeeding for loop prints the types of all the parameters of the declared constructor like declare means it will show you public and private all now there is a class called as a constructor and you need a group of a set of constructors so you need a array of constructor basically so you can have a array of constructor your class is a c type so whenever you pass the class name and you say dot for class name it returns a class type which says what is the actually class type of this particular class now with the c if you say get declared constructors it returns you all the constructor objects inside this particular array now for each construct inside my so this must be the variable must be my and const because of this variable right for is cont inside this thing i want to print i want to print the parameters of the constructors now parameters are also class type because it takes everything as a class type so it basically take the classes right so it can have multiple parameters also it takes multiple parameters also so i'll have a params a array i'll say now cont that's my a specific constructor of my constructor array i'll say get declared parameters no the get parameters sorry because for parameter there is no public or private right so this is how we need to do it so just you can check the option but you need to run this code otherwise you won't understand so this is so 
if you say c dot get declared constructors it gives you all the constructor private and public constructor defined inside your uh, class which class which is c so c refers to which class it refers to class called as a sample class and what is sample class sample class is this which is having three constructors so objects representing all these three constructor will be stored inside this my const array now for each constructor stored in this array if you want to find out the parameters you say get parameter type so it returns the type of parameters it is given right next you know just remind me i'll show you a small program on this it will be much clear then okay sir or maybe okay mm. let me do a small program only that will be much easier rather than explaining like this uh class sample class okay okay so for this class why it's giving some okay public so class c equal to class for name so this particular function what happened Oh, sorry. We need to put the code in a try catch block. So it will be done on the seventh week. But whenever you are running your code, please uh, you have done I think in Python this. Please do like this. Hmm. So it will be fine. If you want to find out how many constructors are there, like in your program. constructors type constructors equal to c dot get constructors and uh, i want to print out how many constructors are there suppose print ln start length okay so i'm doing another version of it i would say it should be not uh, get declared constructors yeah just i'm doing that also i have written both the versions right okay 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 so it's giving 2 and 3 can you say why first one is giving only public constructors yeah first one get constructor only gives you the public constructor declare constructor gives you all the constructor declared inside your program 
in your uh, class got sorry got it got it sir it gives you all the constructor okay now suppose you want to find out what are the parameters for your constructor you can do similarly for both the things suppose i am doing for the declared constructor the same for constructor in cvts uh, so all the parameters are of type class type params equal to c20 dot c20 dot get parameters type so it will return you the parameter types now for each class you can have sorry for each constructor you can have more than one constructor also sorry one type also like for the default constructor you do not have any parameter so there won't be any type but for this parameterized constructor you are having two types as argument right here you are having only one type of argument so that's why we take an array okay now for parameter p params params sorry it's a class type right this will be class right yeah system dot out dot println p p dot name so i want to print the type name right and uh, here i want to give group in the first for loop no it will introduce your nts to yeah in the, in the first... first for loop huh cont in conts2 oh sorry yeah it's a two no it is it is one constructor of this type this is correct right yeah this, that is correct yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, second yeah. one okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah 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 see for one class your constructor parameter is sample class type for another one it's a in type and string type and for another there is no type at all so you are getting two lines consecutively right are you getting this or clear sir clear right so similarly as you can do it for a constructor you can do the same thing for the variables instance variable uh for the methods everything right so if you give us instead of a class if you give c dot get methods if you give you the public methods if you give declared methods you give the declared methods if you say get uh, uh, for variable what you have instance variable right get variables or what I cannot remember get fields for instance variable you need to use fields so it will give you a set of fields a array of fields so you can extract all the information if you have the class name suppose the class name only you have you do not have the source file how do you get the information about the class so exactly what we do last day using java p right the same kind of information you can extract over here so if you do this java p with a particular class java dot uh, lang dot string so we fetch all the what are the methods what are the classes what are the sorry what are the uh, data members 
all kind of information same thing we can do so we can have this kind of thing java dot lang dot string so it will give all the information but it is for the string class so for this particular class it will give now the information right so i think you can write this code rather than explaining it over here because once you can write the code it will be very easy to understand this because this reflection is very easy thing you write a simple code first you write you take a class you extract all the information you get the methods you get the uh, um uh, get the methods get the fields get the constructor get the vari variables get the uh, parameter types of a constructor get the parameter types of a method get the parameter return type of a method uh, take the modifiers also you can extract the modifiers also get modifiers also you are having so you can extract all kinds of information so then easily i can i think you can solve this last two questions i'm not explaining them if you do not get understand it i'll explain tomorrow so i don't want to explain this uh, week 5 further today so rather rest of the part i want to do next day um today if we want we can start a bit of a queue of uh, week 6 rather because uh, oh, i few... think it's already 2 o'clock right okay okay yeah okay anyway we have a separate session so this is a general information for everyone uh, we have a separate session for uh, week 6 activity questions tomorrow because we the saturday session was a um, revision session right so we did not address many questions on week 5 so tomorrow we will have the activity session for week 6 okay tomorrow morning 9 to 11 yeah, please join i think we can have it tomorrow yeah, think, yeah if somebody if they get time to watch the week 6 videos i think that will be yeah better that will also. be better yeah they can yeah you can see the things a bit yeah, so please watch the videos attempt the questions before coming for the activity session that will be uh, much easier for you also anything else for week 5 if uh, anybody wants to discuss for week 5 thank you ma'am for the session yeah. Yeah, Arub. I think then we can end yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Tomorrow, okay, we'll discuss again. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Okay. Bye.